Hello everybody, Tegan here with High Point. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today we are very excited to share with you Skywatcher's new and improved high-speed mini astrograph, the HAC 125 DX. Coming in at just 8.4 pounds with an incredibly fast f2 focal ratio, this scope is built for wide field astrophotography in a portable package with incredibly fast optics. So in this video, we're going to be discussing several key aspects of this telescope, including all the specifications, telescope design, how to attach a camera to it, as well as some upsides and things to consider when imaging with f2 optics. Finally, we're going to put it to the test under some clear skies. So with that, like, subscribe, and stay tuned. The HAC 125DX is Skywatcher's second iteration of this telescope and it's otherwise known as a Honda's Advanced Catadioptric Telescope where the camera is fixed to the front corrector plate of the telescope instead of on the rear cell or coming out the side like other traditional telescopes. So if you take a look at this diagram right here, you can see that the light comes in through that corrective lens and then it's refracted down to the primary mirror where it bounces right back up into another set of corrective optics straight to your camera sensor. So now that we have a better understanding of the advanced design of the HAC 125DX, let's take a look at telescope specifications. The 125DX has a primary objective of 125 millimeters and a focal length of 250 millimeters, giving it a fast f2 focal ratio for capturing a lot of data in a short amount of time. The rear primary helical focuser is large and it allows for precise manual adjustments to achieve tack sharp stars. Right next to this helical focuser, you'll also notice that there are two holes threaded for a future third-party electronic autofocuser design. This scope has a corrected imaging circle of 16 millimeters, meaning it's perfect for the smaller puck style astronomy cameras, but also these are fantastic for dedicated imagers who are using cooled astronomy cameras like the 585 and the 533 MC Pros. In addition to all of this, this scope comes in at only 8.4 pounds, meaning it's a great option for the smallest equatorial mounts on the market like the Skywatcher AL55i, which makes this and that mount a great combination for anyone looking for a portable and fast full astrophotography imaging system. All in all, this is a seriously compact astrograph and it delivers a wide field of view and even when you pair it with a smaller camera sensor like the 585 or the 533, you can still fit the entirety of large objects like the Andromeda Galaxy. So now that we've gone over design and specifications, let's see what comes in the box. Upon opening the box, you'll find the HAC 125DX body itself, which has two dovetail mounting shoes for accessories like a guide scope and an ASI Air Plus. Additionally, you'll find mounting rings with a Vixen style dovetail. It also comes with a removable dew shield and lens cap, as well as three camera adapters, one with male T-threads for puck style cameras, one with female T-threads for cooled cameras, and an inch and a quarter adapter for the mini series cameras. And all of these have an inch and a quarter filter threads. Finally, you'll find a full owner's manual as well. I mentioned that this scope comes with three different camera adapters for three different types of cameras. To attach your cameras, it's a simple process. First, you wanna make sure your dew shield is removed before installing your camera and you can remove it by loosening these three knobs along the side. For this tutorial, we'll be attaching the 585 MC Pro. To attach this camera to the scope, we'll need the adapter with the female T-threads. Thread your adapter directly onto the camera body itself without any other adapters in place. Once finished, place the adapter in the camera into the accepting flange on the front of the telescope and tighten it down with the neural thumb screw on the side. All right, so that is it for installation. It is quite simple, but let's take a quick look at the dew shield. On the side of the dew shield, you'll see that it has a slot for through cabling and cable management. We found that realistically, only about two cables can fit at a time and other cables need to be routed up and over the top. With a design like the Honda's Advanced Catadioptric, imaging at such fast focal ratios has its upsides as well as things to consider. First and foremost, you are imaging at a focal ratio of f2.0. This is extremely fast, but it's also going to collect a lot of light, meaning you can grab a good data set in less amount of time than with other telescopes. On the flip side, factors like collimation or sensor tilt are going to play a more critical role than even your fast f4 imaging Newtonians, and especially more 
than your slower RCs and SCTs. Now, for things like collimation on the back of the HAC125, you'll find three sets of push-pull screws for those who are looking to make those small adjustments in collimation to improve your star shape. And of course, on top of this, there are post-processing techniques like picks and sites deconvolution or even blur exterminator for those who are looking to take their star shapes to the next level. Now, our team here at High Point is full of dedicated astrophotographers, and for this review, we really wanted to put the HAC125DX to the test with a dedicated cooled astronomy camera, despite it really being designed for those smaller puck style cameras. For our test, we use the ASI 585 MC Pro, an ASI Air Plus, an Aperture Guide Scope with an ASI 220 Mini Guide Camera, and it all sat on top of the ZWO AM5N. So last night I was able to get a good few hours of data on the Elephant Truck Nebula. It was nice to get away from the light pollution and under dark skies to really put this scope to the test. Before we take a look into the data that we captured, we're going to show you a easy and consistent way to take flat frames with this telescope. We'll be using the t-shirt method, a do-it-yourself solution that has always provided us with good flat frames. All you need to do is simply stretch a white t-shirt or pillowcase over the front of the telescope and camera and secure it around the dew shield with a few rubber bands. Make sure the fabric is pulled tight to eliminate as many wrinkles as possible. So from here, you can choose to point your scope towards a clear patch of sky for your flat frames. With an F2 system, we recommend doing this at dusk or dawn when it's not so bright. Or like us, you can choose to take your flat frames indoors with an in-house studio light. The flats that we took came out perfectly and did a great job correcting our final image. With that said, now it's time to dive deeper and take a look at the data. While we had decent success putting this scope to the test with the ASI 585 MC cooled camera, we did find that subtle shifts in collimation and sag in our imaging train was prevalent during the night simply due to the weight of the cooled camera itself, and these errors may have been accentuated by the larger sensor size and soft focus that night. And the last thing to note is that the thumb screw that holds the camera onto the optics itself really needs to be tightened down to prevent any shift or tilt in your imaging train. That said, the focuser was extremely smooth to use, the focal ratio was fun to work with, and we did collect some incredible data over a single night under dark skies. Overall, the HAC125DX performed very well. With the help of Pix and Sight's deconvolution methods and Blur Exterminator, we were able to remove any of the issues that we saw within our star shapes and capture a pretty cool image of the Elephant Trunk Nebula without the use of a single filter. Now for our next test, we swapped out the 585 MC Pro cooled camera with the smaller 178 monochrome puck style planetary camera. And we saw an instant improvement in our star shape. These cameras are smaller, they're lighter, and they put less stress on the front optics. And they also have a smaller camera sensor that works well within that 16 millimeter corrected imaging circle. The neural thumb screw on the side did a great job of holding this camera down to the scope firmly. And collimating was actually a bit easier as well, attesting to the fact that these these scopes are designed for these smaller and lighter cameras. So in conclusion, the HAC125DX from Skywatcher is an ultra-fast, ultra-portable astrograph capable of working with the smallest equatorial mounts on the market. If you're somebody who's interested in EAA and live stacking, the optics on this scope are going to provide you with incredible images in real time. And if you want to use this scope for dedicated astrophotography, that's also a possibility. You just might need to refocus and collimate from time to time. But don't let that stop you because we were able to gather some incredible data in a single night with this scope. Well, that is it for our full review on the incredible Skywatcher HAC 125DX. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comments below. We'll be more than happy to assist. The link in the description will take you directly to the HAC 125 webpage. Thank you so much again. I'm Tegan with High Point and Clear Skies. <laughs>